Digestion begins in the mouth with the teeth, tongue, and saliva. The sharp-edged teeth tear and rip the food, while the premolars and molars, which have flat surfaces, grind the food into smaller pieces. That is the mechanical digestion of the mouth. Saliva is released into the mouth to begin dissolving the food and to make it slippery so that it can pass easily through the throat and esophagus. This is the chemical digestion of the mouth. The tongue helps to push the food between the grinding teeth and to mix it with the saliva. A ball of food called the bolus is formed and then swallowed. Muscles in your throat force the food downward. A flap of tissue automatically closes off the trachea or windpipe. This is a tube that leads to the lungs. It is required to get air into the lungs during respiration, but water or food is not wanted down this tube. After swallowing, the epiglottis goes back to its normal position and the trachea is once again opened for air. The food moves into the esophagus, which is a tube leading to the stomach. It takes about seven seconds for food to move down the esophagus. The lining of this tube is coated with slippery mucus. The food is pushed along because of muscular contractions called peristalsis. Contractions behind the food push it forward. Food doesn't move down through the digestive tract because of gravity alone. Astronauts in space can digest food even in weightless conditions where there isn't any gravity because of the muscular contractions of peristalsis. Food moves from the esophagus into the stomach, which has a capacity of two to four liters. The stomach is made up of three layers of muscles that create a grinding motion. The churning of the stomach is the mechanical digestion, and at the same time, gastric juices are released into the stomach to carry on chemical digestion. The mechanical digestion helps to mix the enzyme pepsin and hydrochloric acid with the food. The pepsin and hydrochloric acid help to break down proteins in the food into simpler proteins. You've probably used hydrochloric acid in science class to conduct various experiments. You know that this is a strong acid that can easily burn through clothing. How does the stomach protect itself from this acid? Well, a mucus is used to coat the walls of the stomach. After about three to six hours, the food continues to move along through the digestive tract and from the stomach enters the small intestine. The food, which is now called chyme, is in a soft, watery form. The small intestine is anything but small. It is only about three centimeters in diameter, but it is seven meters or about 23 feet long. Imagine this garden hose, which is seven meters long, all curled up and folded around itself inside a human being. The food is pushed along by peristalsis, and will now undergo major chemical digestion. Two organs that are located near the small intestine, the liver and pancreas, will provide intestinal juices that will aid in this digestion. The liver is located to the right of the stomach. One of its important jobs is to produce bile, a substance that will help in digestion. However, bile is not an enzyme, but rather a salt solution that breaks down fat into small fat droplets. Then enzymes in the small intestine can work on the fat. When the bile is made, it is sent and stored in the gallbladder until it is needed in the small intestine. The pancreas is located between the stomach and the small intestine. It manufactures a substance called pancreatic juice. This juice contains many enzymes which will act on the chyme. The pancreas also produces sodium bicarbonate, which will neutralize the acidity of the chyme as it comes from the stomach into the small intestine. It takes anywhere from three to five hours for food in the small intestine to be digested. The proteins are broken down into amino acids. Carbohydrates are broken down into simpler sugars and fats are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. These nutrients are ready to be sent to the living cells of the body. To do that, the nutrients must be absorbed into the blood vessels of the circulatory system. 
The circulatory system with its network of blood vessels reaching every cell of the body will be the transport system. The walls of the small intestine are not smooth, but are actually covered with millions of small finger-like structures called villi. The villi contain small blood vessels that absorb the nutrients. These millions of villi increase the surface area of the small intestine 600 times. That translates to an area the size of a tennis court, ready to absorb nutrients into the circulatory system. As the food continues on from the small intestine, it is now made up of undigested food and water. Before entering the large intestine, the undigested food passes by a finger-like organ called the appendix. The function of this organ is not clear, but scientists believe it has something to do with helping the body fight bacteria and viruses. The undigested food moves into the large intestine, which is shaped like a horseshoe and fits around the small intestine. The large intestine is wider than the small intestine, with a diameter of about 6.5 centimeters. However, it is only 1.5 meters long. Over the next 18 to 24 hours, most of the water contained inside the undigested food is absorbed. Also, helpful bacteria living in the large intestine make vitamins K and B for use by the body. Finally, materials that are not absorbed are formed into solid waste. This includes such things as dead bacteria, food roughage, fat, and protein. This waste will move into a small tube called the rectum for storage. Then it is eliminated from the body through the anus, an opening at the end of the rectum.